I am not here to judge whether the jo collector has done a good job or a bad job. But and it is unpleasant with your uh, uh, way of talking with the collector. Can I answer now? I am hmm? not here to judge about the conduct of the collector. But as a people's representative, I have every business to ask a question. And when I ask a question, please point out to me through that entire conversation before that PDS ration shop, if there was anything objectionable, unparliamentary, discourteous language that I've used. So as a people's representative, if I ask a question to an administrator, and if he is unable to give me an answer, I even went to the extent of saying, oh, you don't have an answer now? Maybe after half an hour you can give me? I said that also. Now if after that somebody, whoever be it, minister, MP, MLA, whoever be it, media, if you think that wasn't right, you have every right to your opinion. But I think as a people's representative, I have every business to ask and seek an answer. If my, if my language was objectionable, you have every business to comment. But I think I have not crossed any limits of parliamentary language, discourteous language, none of that. So where is the objection? Madam, uh, the Prithin Finance Commission has touched him. I am Rahul from Gettin uh, The Prithin Finance Commission has clearly recommended to the government of India to revisit the FRGM Act. After all, the Act is 20 years old. The 15th Finance Commission? has recommended to the government of India to revisit the FRTM Act. It's almost 20 years old now. I'm asking this question in the background of the frequent poses of our, uh, our chief, chief minister that the limit of FRTM has not been raised for the government, state government, to raise additional rooms. What is your stand on? 15th Finance Commission recommends. Recommends. During COVID, because of the contingency, which was the arising out of the pandemic and the lockdown, the borrowing limits of the states were increased from 3% to almost up to 5%. Some with, a few of them with some conditions, conditions which were uh, with an objective of getting reforms through. So the conditions were not indiscreet, they were very clearly aimed at achieving some of the objectives of reform. So the central government, at the time of the lockdown, post the lockdown, because of COVID, understood and in consultation with the states, understood the states and in consultation with the states, increased the borrowing limit. So we have responded where there is a need for increasing the borrowing limits. Uh, Madam, Madam, one question. Sir, uh, Or, what did you say, Karnatakaites, Andhraites, or, or, or Indians? Hmm. Uh, what companies did you put as a word adjective? Fintech companies. Fintech companies. <laughs> that they are collecting deposits. Yeah. You're done? Yeah. I think you've answered your question yourself by saying, is it paid by Andhraites, is it paid by Kannadigas, is it paid by Indians? You, you have the answer in, embedded in your question itself. So, it's worrying that sometimes when people want to rake up regionalism and question as though the center is an alien and the states are the ones which are 
going to have to ask such questions. You've answered your question, but I've just elaborated on it. On the fintech companies collecting deposits, um, which probably go against the law, there should be somebody flagging it. And if it's flagged, I can work with the Reserve Bank and ensure that it doesn't happen. Wrongdoings can be contained. I think I've answered that several times and I repeat it. If every individual or state starts saying, I paid so much so give me that much back, taxation principle doesn't work on that ground. That is why I quoted the example of Hyderabad and Hyderabad district. Will you then say everything that comes from Hyderabad district will have to be spent only in Hyderabad? Will you not use it to other parts of the state? This is a very regressive way of handling issues between center and state. This is a very regressive way. Then many other states equally, which are better probably in terms of the quantum of revenue that they contribute to the central kitty, who can ask them? It doesn't work that way. And he knows it. I'm sure everybody knows it. It's good for rhetoric. It's good for media. It's good because it keeps the temperature hot and higher, but it is not, uh, I think it's disingenuous, if anything. So the planning commission earlier, according to them, therefore, was controlling their expenditure and that was okay for them. But whereas under the constitution, there is an act which tells the government of India expenditure department should have an oversight over the state's expenditure, that's objectionable. So what is provided by constitution is objectionable. Whereas what the planning commission, which at that time was not even constitutionally provided, it wasn't even statutorily provided, that is acceptable. So please, let's do some homework on it. I want to learn more on this. A constitutional provision for the central government expenditure department to make sure that the borrowings of the states are also taken into consideration to understand where the debt to GDP ratio will be is objectionable. Whereas you want a body which was not even a constitutionally provided body to govern and say that is acceptable. So. I'm, I'm surprised at this. No, no arguments here. If you're voicing your view, I'll take it. Then. Yes. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I should have come out long back. 40,000 becoming 1 lakh 40,000. I'm sure it should have come out long time back. I agree. Yeah, well, I'll hope for, we'll work for it. And I, I'm also uh, taking into consideration the facts that economies which were far developed than India, economies which are comparable with India like the other emerging markets, and I'm not deriding anybody, but the reality is, at a time when multilateral institutions, whether they are World Bank, my IMF, or any others, who are looking at global economy, are clearly saying that many of these countries are on the verge of recession if they are already not in it. And, sorry, sorry, and there are economies which are at a high risk of in recession, some of them 85 percent, some of them 15, 16 percent, and the report also very clearly says 
that India is not on the verge of a recession at all.